much that he wanted to live on the inside of you. We're going to John 10.10 10 right away. Man, that was one of the first scriptures that I received when I first got born again. Couldn't get my relationship right with Jesus, couldn't figure it out. Why he wasn't talking to me. And I was questioning that. I said, why isn't the Lord talking to me? You know, some people are hearing him. And isn't it normal once you're born again and a child of God that this is my thought. Uh, back in 1986, that should he be talking to you? And, you know, I had a, a, a dear brother, James Cancel. He is now with the Lord. And uh, he was filled with the love of God. You could, it, it used to pour out of him. Maybe I caught that. Maybe I caught that. Yes. That was a, a good God thing to catch is, is the love of God. And he looked at me and he said, what does John 10, 10 say? And I, I don't know. She goes, why don't you turn to it? So I'm going to ask you, why don't you turn to it? Let's figure this out. Let's figure this out. Why maybe uh, we're not hearing or maybe we are, but we need to sh hear what John 10, 10 is really saying. Amen. And keep playing, Diane. That's good. Play it. Raise it up a little bit more. Yes. We need to hear your uh, wonderful worship. Man, isn't that wonderful rest, peace, and joy that you receive? When you, you know, uh, just to get off the subject a little bit, if you play an instrument, you know, you, you should practice and you should worship the Lord. And, and um, uh, <clears throat> But I've seen people, not, not saying my wife, my wife's been playing since five years old. And they coaxed her with cookies and some milk. And if you play today, you will get a cookie and a milk. And if you say that to her today, she gets very happy. Thank you for being patient with me. 
John 10, 10. John 10, 10. You know, the thief, this is what he said to me in the counseling appointment. He goes, Ron, you know, tell me about your experiences. And, and uh, so we prayed. And as we prayed, I went back. Now, you don't have to do this. I went all the way back. I had an unforgiving heart because of what Satan put on me as a little child, the age of seven. And uh, that's what we're here for, is to tell the children of the age of seven that God loves you. He, and they, you need to explain John 10, 10 to them. And it's very simple to explain to them. Um, I don't know who's on today, and that's okay. We see Joey and a few others, okay. Amen. Yesterday, amen. Amen, Joey. The Spirit of God loves you. He lives on the inside of you. Thank you for being so faithful. Amen. The thief cometh not but to steal and kill and destroy. I come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. Now, if it's bad, this is what you have to explain it to the children. If it's bad, it's from the devil. If it's good, it's from God. So, this is how religion told me when my father passed at the age of seven, they said that God took your father because he needed him more than you. Man, if you want to make a little kid mad and, and almost angry and like a weapon out there, that's all you have to tell them. <laughs> to the age of 26, in, in 1986, I became born again, and I was wondering, I knew things changed, man. I could see the trees and the colors in March. Man, it, springtime wasn't a normal springtime. Everything was brand new. I was see, I felt forgiven and loved, but where are you, God? Where's your voice? I feel you. I, I, I see you in certain things, but where are you? He said, the thief come, what? It says John, the thief cometh not, but not to steal and kill and destroy, but I come that they may have life and that life more abundantly. I said, it was the devil that took my father. Wow. And then I said, you know, Lord, I'm sorry for believing you. I just didn't. And he never said nothing to me about that because I was already forgiven. Jesus already pinned that on the cross. So many times we hold things against God because people tell us that God did this or he's withholding or it's not the will of God or it, it, the timing of God. And, and uh, I just think he's waiting on us. It, that he's waiting on us to move because God has already moved. We need to move with God. God is not moving like he has to do something. He's already done it. Amen. So... Let me explain that a little bit to you. John 10.10. 10. That's where we're going. That's where we're at. Um, it's not John 10.4. 10, 10.4, 10, Lord. It's John 10.10. 10. Amen. Okay. So, John 10.10. 10, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I come that they may have life and that life and that they may, may, that they might have it more abundantly. This all boils down to its simplest terms. If it's bad, it's from the devil. If it's good, it is from God. Satan steals, kills, and destroys. Jesus gives life more abundantly. The word says, and a little bit more, the thief is mentioned here specifically speaking of the thieves and robbers of John 10, 8. Really, let's, let's go there. John 10, 8. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Don't listen to the, the religious or the people mocking you or, or the ones closest to you. If you come to New Identity Ministries, you're going to 
have to use the word of God to fight because you have now something to steal. I've been fighting for a long time, <laughs> but I fight from the place of victory. Every time there's a victory, I'm telling you that he's lavish. He's lavished us. He's, he's the God of more than enough. More, more, more. It's just always, that's secondary. We attract those things because we're kings and priests. Amen. So let's move on. That was John 10, 8. John 10, 8 is, it says, the thief mentioned here, specifically speaking of the thieves and robbers of John 10, 8, who had claimed to be God, God, to be God's messenger, but weren't. Careful. They, they claimed to be God's messenger, but they weren't. They were selfish, steal, cruel, kill, and destructive, destroy, in contrast to the shepherd who was really selfless and kind and laid his life down for the sheep. Wow, that scripture can, you can, you can actually say, is this a John 10.10 10, uh, sermon? Are we talking that God is killing and stealing and destroying or did he come to give life, life more abundantly? If you can just get that, you can always tell what the fake 20 looks like by remembering about the real 20. That's how they train people. They, they give them the real currency and they feel it. They look at the watermarks. <clears throat> That's John 10, 10. If they're speaking life and that life more abundantly, no judgment. If it can pass the litmus test on John 10, 10, listen to it. If it can't, sorry, uh, I'll, I'll be praying for you maybe. I have to leave now. Um, I can't listen to that because that's not my Jesus. It would be anti-Christ. Amen. Amen. So be careful. I didn't know I was going here today. The Lord just told me, John, the Lord just told me to go here. And uh, that's how faithful he is to you when you say, what does this actually mean? You know? And uh, I'm learning some things today about John 10, 10, and uh, the Holy Spirit is teaching us. Amen? I'm just teaching you how to hear God and have a relationship with Him. Amen? So the shepherd, who was selfless and kind and laid his life down for the sheep, is the one that you want to know. This verse is still the acid test for discerning false messages of God today, as well as the demonic inspiration behind them. Wow. The devil steals, kills, and destroys, but God ministers Zoe life. Oh, my love, my wife loves this. She knows all about Zoe life. She teaches me about, she talks to me and teaches me about Zoe life. She's a teacher. She's also a worship, worshiper, not only on piano. You, when you worship, you worship with your life. You do the best you can with this right and try to, and, and keep out of the snares of the enemy. And he tells you things before they come, so you take care of those things. Don't let them sit too long, because it just gives them more of an inroad, okay? So, this boils all theology down to its simplest terms. If it's bad, it's from the devil. If it's good, it's from God. Satan steals, kills, and destroys. Jesus life and gives life. Jesus is life and he gives life more abundantly. Wow. The Greek word translated life here is zoe and it means life in the absolute sense life as God has it. Wow. That's zoe life. He come to give life that life more abundantly. If someone is speaking uh that, you know, just like this, this is where the devil kills, steals, and destroys. Oh, God is judging the earth with the virus. He not. He can't. Jesus became a curse for us. That's a curse. All the curses of Deuteronomy 28, he took it to his body, and plus more, he overpaid every sense. He sees you perfect on the inside. How can he see himself not? He lives inside of you. That's what we asked. 
the Holy Spirit lives. You're the tabernacle. <laughs> you're the you're the praising altar, sweet smelling aroma to God. Jesus paid the price for all that. He he became sin for us. Amen. So we use our authority and the right authority. We call those things that are not as though they were. We're trying to silence the mouth of the church, but we're not going to be quiet. We're going to be like blind Bartimaeus and yelling. I won't yell loud in the microphone, but he yelled real loud. The disciples were, were getting a little religious. Jesus, should we tell them to be quiet? I mean, this dude is like really yelling over what you're saying here. And, I, and he, he just says, tell him to come forth. The squeaky wheel got more oil. The oil was the Holy Spirit. Amen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, remember, just to sometimes get on your soapbox, but sometimes leave the soapbox alone. He'll tell you when. So the Zoe type of life means, in absolute sense, life of God as it is. That's in the Vines Dictionary if you want to look for Zoe life. Everyone is breathing. Everyone who is breathing has life in the sense of physical existence. But only those who receive Jesus can experience the life of God intended it to be. You need, you are children of God. You're called by his name. You are the ones that are the chosen ones. You are a holy priest under the apple of his eye. Called out ones. The king of kings, if you... One time I seen one of the saints, um, um, as we were worshiping, I seen one of the people in church, um, uh, one of our, our, our good, lovely people of God like you, and I saw in the spirit, this person, they had, they had a high purple collar, a little, their neck looked elongated a little bit. It just looked, the person looked like a person of authority, had purple outfit with certain metals and, and uh, jewels on them that meant things. But when you looked at the person in the spirit, the person was perfect. And they stood with authority. And wow. So, good morning, Brother George. Good morning. This is who you are. God is trying to help you to escape certain things. America was made so that the, the downtrodden, the persecuted can come here and then they can make a difference back where they came from. Sometimes God will call you to the United States through another generation. It might not even be you. It might be your children's children that will come and that's what's happening. You know, when I was in 1966, I had a UNICEF can and that UNICEF can was for people that were living under a canopy. They still had trees and animals. And what we were doing was we were going door to door to collect money for them. And we would bring it back. And that money USF at one time was a good thing. Let's go back into Zoe. Zoe life. You got the Zoe type of life. So if that messenger is bringing good news, then it passes the litmus test, the acid test. If it's speaking, if that message is speaking life and that life more abundantly, and there is no condemnation, and, and if it's, it's bringing life, that life more abundantly, listen to that word. If not, shut it down. Because there's too many other words, too much time, too many words coming through the internet right now. Um, so what you need to do is just put, put John 10.10 10 to the test. Mm -hmm. Put that word to the test. You know, you're allowed to judge what you hear. You can't judge one's heart because you don't know what's in their heart. But you can judge what comes out of the mouth. And you're not supposed to be judgmental. But you can say, was that good? Was that right? Was that wrong? Was that edifying? Was that uplifting? So we understand the Greek word for translated life here is Zoe. And it means life in absolute sense. The life of God has it. Amen. Life in the, it says, but only those who receive Jesus can experience the life of God intended to be. 
Jesus came not only to save people from the torment of eternal hell, but also to give them this Zoe life, or God kind of life, in abundance. Amen. The life of God is not waiting, awaiting people in heaven, but it's the presence, possession of the born again believers in their spirits. John 5, 24 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believe on him that sent me. Oh, believe on him. Believe on what I'm saying here in the word. Have everlasting life, and it shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death to life. If you're feeling condemned, that's not the place for you to be. Turn off that other channel. Come listen to the God channel. Praise the Lord. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for all that you have done for us. Turn on the Holy Spirit today. Peace, love, joy, righteousness. You know, this is the type of sermon, the type of word of God. I didn't know I was going here today. You know, I wake up and I talk to the Lord. It's relationship. And he just said, John 10, 10. I said, okay, I'll go look at it. So I looked at it. and Man, it just goes on with, you know, either sheep or goats. Sheep or goats. You know, make sure that you're eating in good grazing land of the Holy Spirit. Love, peace, joy, righteous, not sin conscience. We're not focusing on sin. Jesus did not. He focused once and for all on sin. He does not call us sinners. He does not convict us of sin. He convicts us of righteousness. That's what he convicts us of. So if you say, well, you know, I feel convicted. No, you don't. You feel condemned. And Romans 8, 1 says, Wow. For thou there, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. The only thing the Holy Spirit can do is convict somebody of righteousness. That's it. No longer does he convict of sin. He took care of that problem a long time ago. When he said it was finished, jump in. It is jump in. You're the righteousness of God. You're perfect in your spirit. Do you still sin? Yes, but we're going to focus on the Word of God. Are you sinning right now? Nope. Why? Because you're focusing on the Word of God in relationship with Him. So just now what you can say is this. Wow, God, you come to give me life today. And that life more abundant. Let's get it on now with our relationship. Let's the Lord says he's so excited. He can get excited, man. <laughs> and, it, and you start to feel that on the inside because it's the gospel. It's the truth. And that truth will set you free. So if you're hearing something different on the internet, shut it off. It sounds good. It's tickling up the ear. You say amen because of condemnation. But no. But now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Remember, Jesus prepared. I said to him this morning, I said, Lord, I'm not going to be coming on here for me. I'm going to come on here for you. And if I come on here for me, it will not work. If I come here on for you, uh, it will work. It's not about me. Now, some of you were told to come to America. You better listen. You better the next opening door to come to America. Come. And this way you can send money back to your homeland. This way your children can, will not be oppressed and go to good school as well. Almost, you have to choose your schools carefully today. Because what they're doing is they're training them up to hate our forefathers, to hate God, to hate our constitution, to hate our flags. These liberals are infiltrated in our schools, a lot of them. And there's Christians in our school too, but they need our help to change the systems. So I speak right now vouchers. Schools are shut down. They need to open up, but we need vouchers. And we need to send our children to schools where we want to send them to. Let other schools, let business people open up the schools. And let them become thinkers, not learners. Let them think freely. Amen. Freely I give. Freely you receive. Freely I give. Amen. 
Let them think, let them, schools that can pray in the morning. Schools that can worship God so he can open up their spirits. You think that a lot of inventions are coming out of the United States right now? Man, you'll see it come off the hook. It'll, it'll be impenetrable. You're just going to have to build a bigger army to keep these uh, wicked people out. They just don't know who they are. And if they knew who they were, and if they just tasted Jesus, tasted the goodness of the Lord, instead of listening to religion fling terrible things at them, just like they're flinging back. Father, we pray for the rioters. We pray for the ones that are wrong. We pray for the ones that are being sucked in right now. We break this demonic stronghold now in the name of Jesus. How can you do that, Pastor? Uh, I got this power of the Holy Spirit. If you speak the word, the true word, the gospel, miracles happen. That's what happens when you, you know, I watch it all the time. I, man, it just comes to me when the woman that could not speak started standing up in church and speaking to me this one after another bing 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 boom healed set free delivered you know the preaching of the gospels there should be signs and wonders and miracles happening some of you are released in your minds and your spirit some of you are enjoying the presence of god just like adam did in the cool of the day and this life will bring many troubles, but the Lord says he'll deliver you from them all. It's a guarantee. 30 years. Man, he just lavished us. I couldn't understand why people didn't understand. They were just trying to bring condemnation when there is none. Well, the Lord is in love with you. He loves you so much. Before the beginning of time, he knew he was going to pin it on the cross for you. Now, he sat down at the right hand of the Father. Doesn't mean he's seated there, he's just saying he's resting because he gave the church over to you. You have all power and authority he's given to you to tread upon scorpions, cast out devils, heal the sick. Freely I have give, freely give. Amen. So all they have to do, very simple. Well, here he comes. I'll tell you, here how, here's how it happens. Just believe in, in Jesus' finished work. Wow. That's all we got to do. Over your workplace, over your children, over your wife, over your husband. Speak the word of God. Speak truth. And, and speak things that will set them free. You know, this is how we fight our battles. We fight them from the place of victory. We love you guys. You have a wonderful, peaceful day. Amen. This is how.